How we doing, guys? Oh, the seat's good. There we go. So, first question, Paris, how do you feel about it? It's uh, something special for you, what have you seen so far? Yeah, I uh, got a chance to walk around and see the beautiful architecture and uh, have some good food. Uh, Got my jacket though, a little, little chilly, but it uh, feels good to, uh, to be abroad and, and, and bring the Net Brooklyn Nets with us. Do you, you enjoy these, uh, these uh, games overseas and like, bring something new to the, to the NBA? For sure. I think it's great to um, see where the game of basketball is and what it's doing and how it brings people together and uh, the beauty of the game is growing. Uh, more people are picking the game up, and uh, you, see it, you see it internationally. And uh, so it's great to, to leave the States for a few days and uh, play a game that counts, counts on our record. So uh, we're trying to win it also. Talk about like, the international exposure, but obviously there's a lot of international players coming to the league yeah. now. So is that, um, is that because of things like this? And then, and then does it show the, like, the depth now of the, of the league that there's so many quality on this game for a long time now, I guess my years are adding up, and to see the growth of the game uh, and how many international players are having an impact, whether that they are all-stars or uh, uh, first team uh, uh, in our league, and uh, I think it gives hope and inspiration to the next group of young men and women who are growing up and seeing the game grow and the possibilities. Uh, and so it's efforts like this and uh, NBA Cares and uh, Basketball Without Borders that's allowing uh, the game to grow. Great to see. You talk about getting back to winning ways. How, how, have you put your finger on what you might need to do? To yeah, a, a few that? things. You know, we've been just inconsistent as a group, uh, whether that is some nights we make shots and that helps us, and some nights we aren't making shots and puts more pressure on our defense. Uh, I think overall just a consistent play from our group, and that's just the energy and the, uh, the pace that we need to play at to be successful. Uh, we've done some good things. Uh, we need to do more, and a big piece of that is valuing every possession for our group. Yeah, we got some back and we lost some. So Dayron Sharp, we had to leave in Brooklyn. We'll see him in a couple weeks. We'll definitely miss him. Uh, he was really being consistent for our group. Uh, his minutes were increasing for our group. Uh, so we'll miss him. We'll have to figure some things out. Uh, good thing is we signed Harry Giles to his contract, which is guaranteed. So he'll get some minutes for us. And uh, we'll definitely need Nick Claxton to, to probably play more minutes. And then we'll figure things out with the rest of the roster. Coach, now that you're living this experience of playing a game here, the logistic of it. Do you think the NBA can accommodate more regular season games in Europe? I, I think uh, the, the NBA is incredible. The, the players uh, can adapt. Uh, and so uh, what I always do understand is when it's being sponsored or done by the NBA, it's going to be done right. Uh, so our travel, our logistics, uh, our ability to get here was uh, high level, puts our guys in a position to, to just go play basketball. Uh, so I think, it, yes, it can be accomplished. This is a little bit off topic. Greg Popovich is turning 75 at the end of the month. Uh, can you imagine an NBA without Pop at some point? No. Uh, I'll say that. Um, I don't want to imagine it either. And uh, he's touched so many lives. And uh, I'm here because of him. Uh, he gave me the opportunity to shadow as a former basketball player and watch him and see him prepare and uh, test and see if I wanted to do this for a living. And uh, so I don't want to see the NBA without him. Can you share your favorite pop moment? He would not want me to do that. Um, I'll just say he embraced uh, my family and uh, I've eaten at his dinner table. My kids have uh, hugged him and uh, he wouldn't want to admit that. but. Uh, uh, he means a lot to, to me and my family. What's his yeah. legacy to the game? Uh, he hasn't, he's still living. Let that man live. He's going to be all right. He's, uh, he's, he loves to coach. Uh, he is a mentor. He is, uh, you know, put that franchise in, in, in a great place. Uh, I love that he's able to coach Wimby, and, uh, uh, which is a, a great connection from being here. But uh, he's just an unbelievable teacher, manager, uh, human being, and... Um, I don't know. He's, he's, he's carried this game for us for a long time, which is a good thing, especially for coaches. Do you think Wayne Manyama is living up to the hype? Oh, I, I give those guys their own opportunity to grow and, and be who they are. Um, what I have liked from afar is he seems extremely mature 
and uh, really composed. And when you're talking about building a franchise around a young man, uh, I was able to see that in San Antonio with Tim Duncan, Manu, and, and Tony. And uh, for that torch to be passed to uh, Wimby seems like a pretty good thing. Yeah, play for the Nets, yeah. Uh, uh, I'm not that old, but yes. Yes. Good thing we got our old jerseys back to uh, the days that Drazen was playing in our, in our old throwback jerseys, for sure. Wow, that's a good one. I, I think there are a lot of uh, things that help you be more of a successful NBA player, whether it's the nutrition, whether it's the education of how do you take care of your body, whether it's, it's uh, all the modalities that guys have, the, uh, uh, there's more coaches, there's more staffing to get you prepared to play. Um, and so I think the guys are in better position to have longer careers, and if they receive that information and use it, uh, so in a better place to, to play and have longer careers. I think overall, though, we had some um, suggestions, whether it was that first day not to nap, go walk around a little bit, get a little fresh air. So I've, I've uh, adjusted. Sleep was good last night, and hopefully our guys have been hydrating and we're ready to play. So no snails or other local specialties? Uh, I had a little foie gras last night. Besides that, uh, no snails yet. Maybe tonight. I'm not going to do it. Not going to do it. Not going to try it. This was the first season of the in-season tournament. What do you think of it in general, and what do you think it adds to the to the season? Yeah, I'll just say I was a huge proponent and a fan of the in-season tournament. I, I love the competition level that uh, came from those games. Uh, I think it's it's going to get better. I think we'll make some tweaks along the way, uh, but overall, the feel of uh, playing for something, uh, those games were meaningful. Uh, I I really liked it. Can you, can you feel the vibes in the arenas with all the different courts, different jerseys? I, I loved every be, uh, piece of it. The jerseys, the court, the ability to uh, make it seem different. Uh, um, and, and I think it's going to grow. So uh, give a lot of credit to, to the people behind thinking that through and looking forward to more of them. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, guys.